Hello everyone, it's really great to be with you today. Well, it's a very exciting day for me, I have to admit. Thank you, President Coleman, for your support and your leadership of this great institution. I want to thank the Board of Regents and the Presidential Search Committee for this tremendous privilege and honor to serve what I think is the greatest public university in the world. The University of Michigan is known worldwide as an exceptional place for learning, teaching, healing, and service across this great state, across this great nation, and around the world. And I am humbled and honored to be named its 15th president. This is a remarkable day for me and for my family. And Wendy, thank you so much for being with me today. Let's hear it from my wife, Wendy. I grew up on a college campus, the wonderful institution which is the University of British Columbia. And I know that a lot of people are watching from Vancouver and from UBC. And I want to start off by saying it's been an honor and privilege for me to serve you. Uh, and I'm thinking of you, of you on this day. On that campus in Vancouver, that's where I first learned how to ride my bike. Among students and the beautiful trees on that campus around the main mall, and its old academic buildings. I'm a professor's child. My father was a math mathematics professor there, and from those very early days on that campus, I've always loved the energy of a great public research university. I have always known that universities can and do transform the world for the better. This place, Michigan, that I've been able to visit many times, is a very special place. It feels very right to me. It has a unique energy that conveys a sense of purpose to everyone, from a first year student to the president of the institution. It is a pinnacle of public higher education. It's an inspiration to institutions around the world. Michigan, as one of the world's great public universities, has an unrivaled research enterprise that every day results in innovations and discoveries that shape the future. And that stretches all the way from medicine and engineering to the arts and humanities and the social sciences. The breadth and depth of the intellectual capital of this great institution and the energy of the students is what attracts me here. Students and scholars are eager to come here to engage and to contribute. And I can't wait to partner and to interact with the students of this great institution on all of the campuses of the University of Michigan. And everyone knows the power of maize and blue when it comes to big time and big ten <laughs> intercollegiate athletics. The breadth and quality of activity here makes this university exceptional and so integral to this society, to this state, but also for the world. Michigan embodies leadership. Many things have started at this great institution with speeches from people like President Kennedy, with the inspiration of Gerald Ford as a Wolverine, but also as president of this great nation. Our world has changed in the last two and a half years. And we've navigated that together in all the campuses of the great universities of this world. COVID has transformed how we live and how we work. And so too has a heightened awareness during this time of racial and ethnic inequities across this nation and indeed around the world. We are and we should be more cognizant than ever 
of the irreparable damage that we are doing to our planet with this climate emergency. Now this may discourage some people, but not me. This is the University of Michigan. This is where leaders and best reside, and where leaders and best graduate from. This institution has the ability, through the intellectual capital of the faculty, and staff, and students, to really address these existential challenges that affect the world. We will do so together. To me, even though there are challenges, this is an incredibly exciting time to be a student, to be a professor, and even to be a university president. You see, I fiercely believe that higher education, through our scholarship, our service, and through our graduates, can deliver the changes that we need to build a healthy, sustainable, and just community, focusing on those very vexing existential challenges that lie before us. Have no doubt that I am eager to get started, to join this extraordinary community. My job as president will be to make this great university even greater, even stronger, more engaged, and more inclusive. I want to amplify Michigan's impact on this great state, this great nation, and the world. I'm excited about the challenges and the opportunities to work with and to support the faculty, students, staff, and 600,000 alumni around the world. My job is not just to lead in partnership with the regents and the senates and the student associations of this institution. My primary responsibility is to serve, to serve each and every one of you. It's a privilege to be associated with such a great community of scholars. I learned in a very short time that there is great pride in being associated with the University of Michigan, and rightly so. This is a stunning institution by any measure. <coughs> to our students in the audience and perhaps watching by live stream, or perhaps watching on YouTube later, I want to say that I understand the joy and sense of accomplishment that comes with pursuing your passions at such a great research university. I know how bright you are. I know how passionate you are. I have daughters around your age. But I also know that although this is an amazing experience, that there are struggles and perhaps through this pandemic, a sense of isolation that you sometimes can feel. And as been mentioned, I felt that way as an adolescent and as a young adult. And I pledge to you today that as president, I will make certain that this university is always there for you on good days and bad, so that you can succeed and thrive the maximum potential that you've demonstrated to us in the moment you expressed an interest in coming to Michigan. I want to thank President Mary Sue Coleman for the many conversations that we've already had in the recent weeks and we'll have into the future. I know how well regarded she is, both here on campus but throughout higher education. I've had a chance to interact with her when she was president of the AAU. I also know what matters the most to this community is that she has been selfless in returning to lead this university for a second time as president. Mary Sue, I will seek your advice, 
but also we'll respect your much deserved retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very sealed round of applause. <laughs> surfing in Nippert was true. I know the big house is quite a bit bigger, 115,000 I hear. They say the biggest uh, stadium in North America, second biggest in the world I, I hear. I don't know if the students are going to remember this uh, announcement that, that I did that, but uh, we can talk about that later. <laughs> just want to end with just uh, a little bit about myself. You know I'm a husband to Wendy, my better half and a father to two wonderful daughters, Juliana, who just got married, and Sarah. And Juliana, as you heard, just got married to David Chang. You heard about my father, the professor of mathematics, Takashi. I also have a mother, Sachiko. I wouldn't be anywhere without her today. And my brother, Memoro, my first uh, older brother, a professor of piano at Creighton and my younger brother, Ken, a brilliant mathematician at the University of Virginia. And by the way, he wants to come to this game between UVA and Michigan. <laughs> and Michigan, Michigan's gonna win by a lot, right? <laughs> Education has always been integral to our family. I live to serve, and I believe in leading by example. I will give 150% for the University of Michigan. As of today, I am proud to be a Michigan Wolverine. Thank you, and go blue! <laughs>